So I want to tell you about an experience that I think all of us have probably had at one time or another. You had a day that you wish you never had. One of those days that you say, this has got to be one of the worst days of my life. And probably at that time, somebody who loves you or cares about you has said, you know, get a good night's sleep and tomorrow will be a different day. Anybody have that experience? Probably all of us, right? Well, one time I saw Jackie Mason, you know, that uh, comedian on TV. He said he was having a terrible day like that. Things were going terrible for him. And his friend said, cheer up. Things could be worse. So we cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. <laughs> on the Saturday, between Good Friday and Easter morning, the disciples were in that place, the worst day of their life. And they were in a place where they thought, you know, nothing is going to make this any better. But what a difference one day made. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning, the difference that one day made for the disciples then and still makes for us who are his disciples today. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads and let's pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. On Thursday this week, we had our Monday Thursday service, and I asked folks at that time to think about what the disciples were going through on that Saturday. That Saturday, they were not just suffering from the loss of the person who they loved so much, but they were suffering from looking at themselves and realizing how cowardly, how poorly they had behaved. Because you may remember Thursday night, there they were together with Jesus celebrating the Last Supper. And Jesus had told them at the Last Supper, the shepherd will be struck and the flock will scatter. And they had all said, oh no, we will stay with you Jesus till the end, even if it means our death. And just a short period of time later, the Roman guards and the Temple guards came out to arrest Jesus, and what happened? They all ran away. They deserted him. And so now, Saturday, things had happened so fast. He was arrested Thursday night, put on trial, tried, tortured, put to death, sealed in a tomb all by Friday evening. And now, Saturday, they were at the lowest point they had ever experienced in their life. They were so low, thinking about themselves and thinking about the loss of Jesus, who they loved so much. Now, did you ever wonder, why is it that Jesus stayed those three days in a tomb? Why three days? Why such a long period of time? I think there are three reasons. One comes out from Scripture. Jesus said, that this was going to be a sign for the people, like the sign of Jonah in the belly of the whale for three days, so the Son of Man would be in the earth for three days. Now the second reason is it proves that he was totally, really, actually, without any doubt whatsoever, dead. Now this is important because we have to know that he was dead to know that he was truly raised back to life again. And the third reason for this long period of time in the tomb is because Jesus had selected these apostles to carry his good news to the world. And he had to make sure that the most important message they would ever get would be burned deeply in their soul and in their mind. And this time of their darkest depression their worst time when they thought about not just the loss of Christ, but their own weakness, their own sinfulness, their own betrayal. It burned that lesson into their mind, and they would never, ever forget it. Because what a relief it was when they saw Christ, when he came to them and showed them his hands and his feet. He showed them that he was alive. Not only was their grief at his loss taken away, but their guilt was lifted because he told them he still 
loved them, and now he had a job for them to do. And so the resurrection changed everything for the disciples. It also took them from those who were disciples, who also carried the good news of Christ, to being apostles of the good news, eyewitnesses to the resurrection, and who were also disciples. So it was that moment that transformed them really from disciples to apostles. Now, an apostle, apostle is from the Greek word apostolos, which simply means one who is sent. But these apostles were not just sent with a message. They also were ambassadors, emissaries, representatives of God. They had the authority to speak for God, to write for God. And so this was a great blessing uh, to them. That also was a difference, a change, because of the resurrection. This week as I was praying about this service and thinking about what is I going to talk to you about, I said, you know, what I really want to communicate to you is if one of our disciples, if one of the apostles was here on Sunday morning as our guest speaker on Easter, what would he say to you? And so I selected uh, the Apostle Paul, and I looked through his letters to bring out to you Paul's Easter message. So if you're living in the first century in Athens or Corinth or Macedonia, and the Apostle Paul came and gave the Easter message, here's what I think he would say to you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You are those made holy in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all of our affliction. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the promise of our deliverance from sin and death, our teacher, our example, our Redeemer. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, God present in us, around us, to guide us and comfort us, to put the fear of God in us and in all things to lead us always closer to the Father. I'm delighted to proclaim to you this morning the Easter message. It is the same message that I proclaimed in Damascus, in Ephesus, in Antioch, in Athens, in Corinth, in Macedonia, and finally in Rome. My message is this, that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is forgiveness for our sins and acceptance as children of the one true God who always was and always will be, who made all that is, who knows all things, can do all things, who is over all things, through all things, and holds all things together. On Easter, we remember and celebrate what is the most important event from the time the first human being stood on this earth until now, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' resurrection changes everything. It gives to us the promise of eternity. It gives us a purpose for living. And it gives us the ability to live a life of joy and peace. Look at your own life. What in your own life is more important than the promise that you would spend eternity with God in heaven? What is all of human history compared to the age and the infinity of God's creation? If we think of all the time from the beginning of creation, the Big Bang to the present day, if we think of that as one 24-hour day, then all of human history is less than a single second on that cosmic clock. Less than one second. The good news of Christ made plain to us by the resurrection is that the God who holds all of infinity, all of eternity and creation in the palm of his hand, makes us 
His true children. And this through our faith in Him and His one true child, Jesus Christ. And we know this is true because God raised Him back to life on the morning of the third day after His body had been sealed in a tomb. I am a witness to this, as are Peter, John, James, Bartholomew, Thomas, the other apostles, and hundreds of eyewitnesses. We saw him put to death, and then we saw him raised back to life again three days later. We saw the wounds on his hands and feet. We heard him speak to us. We even broke bread with him and ate with him. At the Last Supper, Jesus taught us this. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to be with me, so that where I am, you may be also. When we saw him alive, that was our proof that Jesus was and is truly the Son of God. And that he has the authority and the power to grant eternal life to those who he loves and who love him. Because we have eternal life, that changes how we think about our life on earth. Before Jesus, when we apostles were all Jews, we agreed with King Solomon who said, who knows if there's heaven for us or not, whether the spirit of man goes up or goes down. The only thing we know is this. Obey God, work hard, and enjoy life as much as you can. And remember, God always watches you and has the power to punish or to reward. But now because God raised Jesus back to life, our life has a purpose. Now it's much more than work hard, obey God, and enjoy life. Now it's building up our relationship with God in this life, knowing that that relationship is going to last into eternity. Jesus' crucifixion helps us to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul as God commanded us. For the death of Christ proves how much God loves us. For while we were sinners, he sent his son to die on the cross as an offering for us. And the resurrection of Christ shows us how much God loves us, that he even wants us to be with him throughout eternity. God our Father is perfect in wisdom and knowledge and power. He loves us so much and he gives us so much, especially life on this beautiful planet. And all this makes us want to love him. And so when we want to love him, we want to love those who he loves. And so we love others and we help others because we love him and we want to bless him. And our Lord has given us a great gift, the gift of life on this planet. And when we look at this life that we have in the light of eternity, and we realize that eternity is there for us and that God has given us this great gift. It helps us to live life in a better way. It helps us to look beyond the dirt and the grime of life, to see that the beauty of heaven is just above. It helps us to look past the hate and the horror that we all see and sometimes experience, to realize that the love and the light and the joy of God are just ahead of us. The resurrection of Jesus helps us to be thankful, truly thankful for every minute that we have on this earth, even the bad not just the good. So rejoice. Be thankful. Jesus' resurrection gives you eternal life, a purpose for living, and an ability to live a life of joy and peace and love as you serve out the purpose that God has for you. So praise be to God, our Father, who is the Creator, who is the source of our life in Christ, Praise be to Jesus who came to be for us the wisdom of God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And praise be to the Holy Spirit who reveals to us what God has prepared for those who love him. So stand forth.
stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And let all that you do be done in love. Oh, what a difference that day makes. What a difference the resurrection makes. Christ is risen. I say Christ is risen, and the people of God respond. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks and praise to you for the wonder, for the awe, for the amazement that the disciples felt as they saw the risen Christ. We pray, Lord, that a measure, a portion of that awe, of that wonder, of that joy might be in us, that we might be Easter people in a good Friday world, going forth with the light of Christ in our heart and in our mind, today and always. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in his precious name.